Hey guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. As you can see, I am coming back at you with Fell. So, apparently Chapter 3 is going to be out in December, so I haven't heard anything about the big art rework, so I assume it's uh, possibly uh, delayed. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep playing through Fell just like normal, and when the I guess when the big art rework comes out, I guess I'll just replay it for you guys to show off the, uh, the changes. But anyway, so it's been a while. Let's go ahead and jump right back into it. This is the alternate pathway for Arrow. So I'm, this is, uh, I'm guessing that you leave town with Arrow before all the big, bad uh, stuff goes down. But anyway, guys, please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes. We'll entertain you, and let's jump right in. Alarm 10, you are up, and let's go. Okay. <clears throat> oh, Sorry, let me uh, readjust my legs on the bed. Okay, all right, yeah, I'm recording this on my bed. <laughs> My feet threaten to fumble over each other every few steps, but I'm determined to keep steady. Let me back up a little bit. Okay. All right. All right, Ash. Okay. Well, when you come back to it, remember you... I'm, I'm backing up just a little bit for you guys. Well, when you come back to it, remember to have some water so you don't dehydrate yourself. Bad enough having a hungover father. Can do. Anyways, I gotta go. Hope you find your dad soon. Don't worry too much about it. This talk actually gave me some time to think about where you could be. There are only so many places you can go in Dewhurst, after all. You can definitely rule out the library. Make sure to give him an earful when you find him. Oh, I plan to do more than that, Wes. He's intruding on some much-needed beauty rest. Now then, you have a good night. She waves me off as I walk past her and I do the same. With the dock still a few ways to go. I break into a bit of a jog. My feet threaten to fumble over each other every few steps, but I'm determined to keep steady. Oh, that is beautiful! Wow, what a wow. That is gorgeous at work. Guys, let's just take a second to uh, take this in. This is one hell of a scene. God, the lights. Oh my God, the little particles in the air. The moon playing off the water. This is absolutely fucking beautiful. I think, the, the, I think there's only one guy working on this game. Um, I can't, I don't remember if it's a team or if it's just one dude. I think it's just one guy. Oh, holy shit. He's, if he made, if he made this, I mean, whoever made this, they're incredibly talented. This is beautiful. <laughs> anyway. Oh, man, that makes me nostalgic. Oh, God. All right, eventually I can make out the shapes of a handful of ships ahead, swaying left and right at the mercy of the waves. Only a single lantern is lit at the entrance to the docks in and one at the end of the, in the one at the end of each pier. I slow to a stop and catch my breath and look around. No sign of arrow. For a horrible moment, I fear I missed my chance when I see a move when I see movement in the darkness. At first, I can only see his tank top, followed by his eyes, steel with dead set determination, glowing under the firelight between us. Behind me is the dying bustle of town folk as they settle in while the quiet while the quiet of Arrow's presence stands before me. He holds up a hand when I start to say something, gesturing for me to follow him into the cool inky black. I stare into his unblinking gaze for a while until he turns his back to me. A Arrow, wait! The goat vanishes without a word, taken by the night and out of sight, taken by the night and out of sight, like he wasn't there just seconds ago. I want to follow him, but I feel my feet paws lock in place. Whatever, ha whatever happens going forward, things will change. A lump forms in my throat at that thought, which threatens to make me turn back and go home right then and there. But that won't stop what's happening. If I'm going to do something, I need to do it now. One, two, three. With an exasperated huff, I glance back at the town for just a moment, then head after him. His footsteps creak against the damp wood beneath our feet, ahead of me in tune with the waves The waves beneath us swayed by the steady breeze in our faces. We walk a good bit in silence, along the old dock with the only sounds of our, foot of our surroundings to fill the void. I can faintly hear my own breathing. It's slow and steady, just on the cusp of losing its rhythm. Keep focused. Arrow stops so suddenly that I almost go, I almost go beak first into him. We're standing by one of his father's boats. So that's how he plans on making his getaway. Taking a boat and never looking back. It's so simple, it's like the start of an adventure novel. He turns to me in my musing with a determined expression on his muzzle. Our eyes stay locked on each other. I wonder what he could be thinking, and he's probably wondering the same thing from me. Well? One word. That's all he asks. One word in exchange for another. I know what I want to say, but here and now, looking into his eyes, I'm choked up. There's no easy answer for this, and only one will satisfy him. I can't go with you. The young goat stares at me for several long moments, 
and chuckles to himself. It's the last thing I expect, and it uneases me. Oh, There's no joy in the laugh itself, and when he stops, there's a deep look of disappointment in his eyes as he shakes his head. Why am I not surprised? You've never been able to picture a world beyond what you can see. Ouch. That's the anger I'm expecting, and while I can try to fire back, I stay firm in my response. The answer is no, Arrow. Your place is here with me, your dad, all of us. We belong here. Belong here? Give me a break, Wes. We haven't belonged here for a long time now, if at all. We? When did this become about us? What are you talking about? Of course we belong here. Arrow laughs to himself again, shaking his head once more and glancing back to the boat next to us. Just because you haven't seen it doesn't mean that I haven't. The people of this town, we aren't like them and they know that. It doesn't take a skull mask to know that you won't just that you don't that you just don't fit in here. I knew from the day that I met you and learned there was more out there than, than a tiny village of Let me try that again. I learned I knew from the day that I met you and learned there was more out there than a tiny village the world forgot. Why is he saying this? That's that's just not true. You have to know deep down, Wes, that your place isn't here. You've always been the odd man out in Dewhurst, the one everyone calls the oddball. Never truly having a place here. There's a twist in my stomach at these words. Feelings I keep buried deep inside bubble to the surface. From the time I was little, I've always felt an felt like an outsider. I never looked like anyone in the village or even my father. As hard as I tried to be like everyone else, there has always been a hill that I can just never get over to feel like I belong. But even still, Elor reaches out a hand to me with a warm smile on his muzzle. You don't have to hide behind a mask with me know exactly who you are behind it. Come with me, and you never have to pretend to be anyone that you don't want to. I stare down at his outstretched hand. It looks warm and welcoming, with no hint of malice or deceit behind the gesture. Just a friend who thinks he's helping me. I made my decision, though. I really can't. Tears form in my eyes as I deny him again, and he retreats his hand. Arrow, this is our home, where the both of us grew up together. We've lived here our entire lives. Why would we ever leave? A sad look forms in his gaze, and he turns away from me to face his ride out of here. I reach out to touch his shoulder, which, re which he recoils from before I can make contact. Not everyone wants to stay in their father's attic for the rest of their lives. There's a coldness to his tone that feels like a punch to the gut. Arrow, I... I want to say more, but fall short. What more can be said? I failed. His mind is made up, and there's nothing I can do. My paws shake, and I stare down at the dock. A few tears falling against it. I try to wipe them with my sleeve, only for more to burst out. Soon I'm clutching my face and heaving from the pressure building up in my chest, robbing me of the ability to breathe. The more I try to stop, the more I feel like I'm losing control of myself. I'm going to lose my friend. He's leaving and I'm going to be alone. I don't want to lose him, but I can't make him stay no matter how much I want him to. Besides him, all I have is Mac, the only other person to understand me. There's no one else. No one! Without warning, I'm pulled into a tight embrace and the side of my face is pressed into a warm chest. I didn't mean to come on so strong. I, I should have said i a... I'm really sorry. I just... I don't want to die here, Wesley. I want to see what the world has to offer, and if you want to come, then I want to see it with you. I squeeze him as tight as I possibly can. As if it'll keep him from getting on that boat. And, and I just want you to stay here with me. I, I don't want to be without you or Dad. Wesley. He sighs and rests his head on top of mine. We stand there together in the night breeze, keeping close to each other. When we hugged each other earlier today, I wouldn't have thought that it was our second second to last. Both of us are at a loss for what to say next. The thing I say will get him to stay, and I know that I can't go with that can't go with him. I can't leave the only world that I've ever known. Even if even if I don't really belong here. There's no telling just how much time passes, but eventually the tears subside enough to have less haggard breathing than before. Arrow seems to pick up on the softer rhythm against his chest. He looks down at me with a gentler expression. You all right? He whispers it soft enough into my ears, if any louder will set me off again. In truth, it may. Y yeah, I, I think... My words are stopped by a sudden rush from something burning that shoots up from my stomach to my throat. Knowing full well what's coming, I push Arrow away to fall on my knees, lurching over the dock. A horrific mixture of meat buns, corn, and stew come flooding out my muzzle into the ocean in a steady stream. I clutch the dock for dear life as the last of my birthday meal evacuates and I fall back on my rear. 
There's a deep sigh next to me, and I glanced to see Arrow kneeling down to my level with a look of confusion mixed with worry. You had a drink before this, didn't you? I blush with embarrassment and look away from him, as if the mask didn't already hide it. It was only half a glass. My ears twitch at the faintest chuckle from him. Ha! I knew it. You really can't hold your liquor. He reaches out to give me a few reassuring pats on my shoulder. I have all the things for him to be right about. Let's get you home. My eyes widen at this, and I look over to him with my, with my head half-tilted. The smallest bit of hope sprouts in my chest that I keep tempered. Do you mean... I trail off, not wanting to screw this up any more than I already did. Arrow scratches the back of his head with a quick glance at his boat, then back at me. He then gets close to me, reaching out his hand, not waiting for me to grasp it, and helps me up into his arms. Can't exactly make the best calls when you're sloshed now, can you? Then continue this tomorrow so when you're sober, okay? I lean into him when I find my le I lean into him when I find my legs have sort of left my control, feeling them knobbling around beneath me. What he says makes my heart sink, however, given that he just wants to have me to have a clear head to give him the answer he wants. So not of tomorrow. I, I can't go with you, Arrow. Neither is enough time to think to even think on the idea. The goat looks off in any other direction except mine, as if searching for an answer in the pitch darkness that surrounds us. Something tells me an answer like the one in the forest is going to rescue him. He concedes with a defeated huff that feels more towards himself than anything else. I stare at him with what I'm sure are tired, glossy eyes, and he seems to settle on something with a small smile. All right, how about this? We both think on our choices. We don't make any rash decisions, just think on what's best for the both of us. And then? And then... He forms his idea as we speak. And then on Spirit's Day, we make a choice. The best choice. Together. Does that sound fair to you, my apprentice? He adds that last bit with some snark and a wink at me. I feel myself smiling in spite of how awful I feel. Why, yes, Mr. Connoisseur, that sounds fabulous. A week, huh? Certainly better than having to answer now or the next day. It's the best chance I have of convincing him to stay. I'm sure he's thinking the same thing about getting me to leave. Arrow doesn't give me much time to think on this, though, since he starts leading me back to town with an arm around me for support. I say nothing as I glance back at the ship he planned on leaving in just moments ago. I know in my heart that I'll be seeing it again soon. Together we walk the quiet streets of Dewhurst without a soul in sight. Even the bar's commotion seems to have died down a bit. Arrow eyes it with a small grin growing on his muzzle. So, how was your first drink, huh? Hopefully it tastes better than it smells. If you must know, it tasted like old, old, old lacquer, old lacquer mixed with cider. He chuckles a bit to himself at this. Ah, yes, the lacquer surprise, my favorite, my favorite flavor. The surprise is that it comes to back to bite you in the ass later. I feel my face grow hot at this, knowing that me blowing chunks is definitely going to go down someplace in the wacky history of Arrow and Wesley. Uh, right next to the kiss. A warning label would have been nice. Danger, you can and probably will lose your birthday brunch. Only if you're a lightweight, or if you consume any sort of carbs. I feel my body do an eye roll of sorts, but settle into a little chuckle. I'm just happy to have him with me. I took that for granted. As we near the edge of town, he quiets down suddenly, and when I'm about to ask why, I see his house come into view. A dim light shines from within, and a shadow passes by the window every now and then. Mr. Jones is getting ready for tomorrow. Either that, or he's waiting. Waiting for what, though? For his son to not come home? Knowing that each day could be the last one he never sees him again? That can't be easy to think about. So, did you plan on telling your dad? Would you be able to tell yours? There's a guiltful expression fixed, on his, fixed to his muzzle when he asks this. He must have asked himself over and over again if that was a good idea or not. More afraid of the situation going bad more than anything else. Had I left today, my last exchange with Mac would have been honest. Would have been honesty. Would have been honesty in my resolve to bring bring Arrow home. What if I had chosen to leave right then and there? How would that have made him feel? No warning, no goodbye, just sun disappearing forever. Almost like he never existed in the first place. But would I even be able to confront him on it? What would I do? On his face. Yeah, I would have told him everything. He has a right to know what his son is doing. Your dad does too. For a second, it looks like he wants to argue that point, only to stop before he leaves his lips. Like, you know you could just be a little less correct about things sometimes, right? But then how would you remember to make the right choices? We stare at each other with sad smiles, an understanding made. I'll think about it. I know you will. Though he won't admit it, I'm sure he's happy to have a little more time with his old man. Speaking of old men, mine is in view, leaning against the last lamp post in the, the last lamp post this side of the town. Mac is looking up at the stars with a concentrated look on his muzzle as he looks at the myriad of stars that sparkle in his eyes. I see his ears twitch upon our approach and he glances over at us, an even bigger smile growing at the sight. 
Howdy there. Found my son, did you? Um, yeah, just, just spotted him stumbling around. At first, I didn't really follow. Then I see a knowing look in my father's expression just play along. We all have an embarrassing first time. I'm just glad you were able to find him. I narrow my eyes at his simultaneous overselling and underselling, which he willfully ignores as he approaches the both of us. You have my thanks, Arrow. I think I can take it from here. Dad grasps my shoulder with his hand, giving Arrow the chance to step away from me while I shakily maintain my balance. He pulls me close to him like Arrow did and ruffles my head fur. No problem, Mr. Ayrton. Next time, I might just keep him, though. My ears twitch up at that statement, and I find it hard to decipher whether or not he's being serious based on the tone. Guess I'll have to be more careful, then. He's just got such a bad habit of getting himself into mischief. You don't have to tell me, sir. We've got over, we've got over a decade of history to prove that. I'm right here, you know. When did this become T's West time? Whoa, Wes, when did you get here? <laughs> ah! All right, all right, let's get you home, kiddo. Thanks again for bringing him here, Arrow. Don't mention it. Someone's got to keep him on his toes, right? He rubs his shoulder a bit where he, keep, where he was helping to keep me sat steady with a satisfied look. Ah, an Arrow. Why don't you stop by the house tomorrow for breakfast? Been a while since you've shared a meal with us. We'd love to have you. Arrow's face flushes a bit and he scratches the back of his head. Uh, sure, I do. I think I can do that. Uh, I'm gonna go now, and Wes? I raise an eyebrow at the flustered young goat. Happy birthday. He turns and leaves in a hurry with the two of us just staring after him. For all his talk about not fitting in, I don't think he expected the gesture. Neither did I. What he said still sticks to the back of my head. Besides him and Mac, what keeps me in Dewhurst? I'm sure I love it, but is it possible to love something when it's all you've ever seen or known? It's just the default, right? Get him to stay, did you? Mac breaks me out of my thoughts as I stare up at him. I stare up at his smiling face. Do you want the long answer or the short one? Well, I've always preferred skipping to the end. I failed to convince him and threw up over the dock. Mac attempts to stifle a laugh at the bluntness of my answer, only to make a low snorting sound that, give him, that, I give him, that gives him an amused look for. Heh, <laughs> seems like it convinced him enough for me. I sigh and we begin to walk home together, with his arms supporting my back so that, we, so that, we don't, so that I don't fall. <sighs> I guess he took pity on me in my drunken state since he offered to take me home and, g and gave me until Spirit's Day to convince him to stay. I don't mention the part about him trying to convince me to come with him. Something tells me that while Mac understands Arrow's departure, he won't be as understanding with the idea of me going. A little less than a week, huh? Well, it's more time than we had to convince him to stay. More time than, more time than we had before to convince him to stay. My ears twitch a little at we. Y you're going to help me? Mac stops in his tracks to stare down at me with his towering figure. He takes a knee so that we're near eye level. You think I'd have to do this by you? You think you'd have to do this by yourself? Come on, Wesley. You know I'll always do what I can to make sure you're happy. Maybe it's the fact that my emotions are at an overflow right now, but I immediately give him the tightest hug imaginable around his neck. Oh, okay. Love you too, son. Can't breathe. He hugs me back as best he can and strokes and strokes my and strokes my back gently, and gives him a small smirk. All right, guys. I'm gonna pause it right here. Yay! It's back. Fell is back. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribing, that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye